In this video, we're going to look at how we can use Google Forms to create an exit ticket or some kind of reflection for the end of the lesson. So, in order to do that, what you really must do first is log on to your Google account. Now, if you don't have a Google account, what you need to do is go and sign up for a Google account, and then you can start using the functionality of Google Forms. So, we're going to go to drive.google.com. That will take you to Google Drive and this is where you can actually create the Google Form. So what I suggest you do is when you're in Google Drive is organize everything into folders. So we're going to create a folder here. I'm just going to click New and then Folder and I'm going to call this Google Forms. Now you may want to name the folder for the class that you're actually teaching but this is what I'm going to do now but you just organize this the way that suits you. So let's Create and then let's go into the folder by double clicking and now what we want to do is go up to New and then go to More and then click Google Forms. So this is what a Google Form looks like. So let's give it a title to begin with. So this is going to be Training Reflection. And as you type the title, you can type it in two places and it will take the title here as well. So you can see that. So, our first question really is going to be to get the student name. So let's put the name here. And our question type is going to be a short answer. Now, as you can see here, we've got lots of different question types. Now, I'm not going to go through every single question type in this video, but you can have a look and you can experiment later. So for this, we're going to choose short answer. We're actually going to say it's a required question. We want that to be required. Now there is an option here, we can click on these three little dots and we can put an extra description here and we have response validation. So if we put description, um, please. And then we can go to validation. Now validation validates whether it's a number, a text, whether it's the length or whether it's a regular expression. So you can change this to how you want it. So it needs to be specific. The answer to this question needs to be specific. We're going to leave it out. We're not going to use that for this particular question. And then we're going to add a new question. And then this question is going to be simply And for this, what Google has done is automatically chosen the paragraph question because it uses artificial intelligence to determine what kind of question that you're asking. And for this, it's actually chosen a paragraph. You can obviously override that by clicking on here and choosing a different option if you want. But we'll keep with the paragraph. We're also going to make that required. So that's all you need as a basic reflection form. Before we continue, what we also can do is go up to our color palettes and we can choose any of these colors because at the moment you can see it's purple. We can choose this option here. That takes you to some other backgrounds. So for example, let's choose this one and then select and there we have it. So that's the first part in creating a Google Form. Now the second part is how do we get this form to the students so they can fill it out. Now the easiest way is to go up to send and then send to email addresses. So if you've got a group email address, then you can send it to a group of students. So that's one way of doing it. You could also embed this into Google Classroom. If you wanted to put it into Google Classroom, you could do that as well. Now if your students do not have email addresses, we need another way of getting this form to the students. So another way we could do it is by opening up a new tab and then going to bit.ly.com or you could go to another URL shortening application. So here's bit.ly. Now what you need to do is click on create bit link and then you paste the URL in here. Now to get the URL, what you need to do is go to your form and if the easiest way is to click send and then click the link button here there is the URL to the form. So we can click that and we can click copy and then go back to bit.ly and paste that in there. And now it's created our unique short URL. And you can see that's very short there. It's bit.ly slash and then this string of characters here. So we can copy that and then we can put that on the whiteboard in some manner, either in a presentation so the children can actually see it and then they would type it into their web browser. Now going back to our Google Form, 
Google also offers this shortened URL, so you can click that. But as you can see, it's slightly longer than what the Bitly one offers. So I would personally go with the Bitly one if that's something you wanted to do. So that's using Bitly. Another way to get this form to the students is by using a QR code. So let's click another tab and we're going to type in QR code generator. And normally this one here, qrcodegenerator.com, is a very good one. So we're going to click on that. And again, this is where we're going to paste our URL. So again, we can go back to here, click on send, click the link button, copy this, copy, close that down, back to our generator, paste it in here, click on create QR code. And there is our QR code. Now we can download that and print it out and put it on the wall. Or we could just put it on the whiteboard and the children using a QR code scanner on their iPads, they can scan that and it will take them straight to the form. So that's another way of actually getting the form out to the students. A fourth way of getting it to the students is if you're using a website to distribute the learning to the students, you can embed it into the website. So again, to do that, we click on send. We click on the two chevrons this time. So we're going to click on that. And there we have the embed code. Now we can change the size here, the height and the width. So we can click on this, copy it. And whatever web app that you're using to create your websites, you can then embed that code into that website. So that's another way that you can get that form out to your students. Now the third part of this tutorial is to show you how you can see the data from the responses of the students. So on our Google form here, we've got this option that says responses. So we click that. This is going to show you all the responses that the students have given. Now at the moment, you can see there, there is no responses. So let's create a response. So let's go to our preview button here. So let's click on our preview. Let's submit that. Now that's submitted our response. So let's go back to our form now. And now you can see here our responses says it's got one response. So let's click on the response and you can see that's the information that's been delivered. And you can go to individual here and you can see the individual ones that have been submitted. So we've got the summary and individual. There is a third way and a third method of seeing the data. Now this method is very good if you want to start manipulating the data. So let's click on create spreadsheet. Now that will create a spreadsheet with all the information that's been submitted from the Google form. So let's create that. And here we go. It gives us a spreadsheet. It gives us a timestamp of when that entry was entered. And then it will give us all the information that we've got in our Google form. Now, obviously, if you've got more complicated forms, then this spreadsheet could be the best way of analyzing the data. Now there's one more thing I want to show you that makes Google Forms really quite powerful. There's an option, if you go up to the settings option, you can turn your reflection into a quiz. So we click on that and we can make this a quiz. So let's click on quiz and then it's going to ask you about the release mark. Immediately release the mark after each submission and or later after a manual review. So depending on what type of questions, whether you've got multiple choice questions or long answer questions, you can choose which one you want to do here. Multiple choice questions can be marked by Google Forms. So once we've turned this on, we can click save. Now we go back to our questions. So I'm going to add another question here. So my question is going to be what? Okay, so my multiple choice answers are. So there are my three answers. Now I'm going to click on answer key now. So what that's doing, it's asking me to choose the correct answer. So the correct answer is obviously the first. It's giving me how many points I want to award. So I'm going to say one. And what I could also do is add some feedback here if I want to. So I can give some feedback for incorrect answers. I could also give some feedback for correct answers. I could add a link if I wanted to. 
that would actually go to a particular link that might help the student more with the feedback that you want to give them. I'm going to leave that blank for now. So let's preview the quiz again. Let's click preview and let's type in some answers and I'm going to click the correct answer and then click submit. Now because in the settings I said that the student can view their score immediately after the test, we can now click on view score and there the student can see what the score is. Now as a teacher, if I go back to the spreadsheet, I can see here that's the particular, I can see here that's the entry that student has given and here is their score for that particular question. Incidentally, if we go back to responses now, we can now start to see we're getting a bit more information on our results and it gives us a much better idea of what's happening. So I hope that's been informative and useful. Good luck with using Google Forms. Thanks for watching. Please click the like button and please subscribe to this channel for more educational technology videos. Until next time, goodbye.